Fort Bowie Sejour was built by the French during Father Le Lauter's War from 1751 to 1755. It is located at the Isthmus of Chignecto in present-day Orlac, New Brunswick, Canada. The property is now a National Historic Site of Canada officially known as Fort Bowie Sejour, Fort Cumberland National Historic Site. To maintain the land route between Louisbourg and Quebec, the French built this fort and two satellite installations, one at present-day Port Elgin, New Brunswick and the other at present-day St. John, New Brunswick. Fort Bowie Sejour is notable as the site of the Battle of Fort Bowie Sejour, which was both the final act in the long fight between Britain and France for control of Acadia, and the opening act of the final struggle between the two great empires for North America. Renamed in 1755 Fort Cumberland by the British, who were victorious. It was the site of the Battle of Fort Cumberland during the American Revolutionary War. Historical Context Fort Bowie Sejour was one of several French forts erected after King George's War to strengthen the French position in North America against the British. Louisbourg was rebuilt, Fort Niagara on Lake Ontario was expanded, Fort Duquesne was constructed near present-day Pittsburgh, and Fort Rouley, at the delta of the Humber River, was built. In Acadia, Fort Managucha was built to the west of the mouth of the St. John River, further up the river they reoccupied Fort Nerapis, Fort Gadiac, a fortified supply depot, was built at Indian Island, Shediac Bay. Following the Treaty of Utrecht in 1713, the part of Acadia which is known today as Peninsula Nova Scotia changed from French to British control, and became another British colony on the eastern seaboard, due to disagreements in interpretation of the treaty provisions delineating Acadia's boundaries. The ownership of present-day New Brunswick continued to be disputed. An informal dividing line was eventually established on the Isthmus of Chignecto at the Missiquash River. As tensions between France and Britain escalated in the 1740s, the territorial dispute over colonial limits became an important issue. Father Lalauta's War 1. Historians suggest that the French were probably using Bowie Sejour Ridge, just to the west of the Missiquash, as a camp as early as 1744. During Father Lalauta's War, on May 1, 1750, Major Charles Lawrence arrived with 400 men to secure the Bowie Sejour Ridge. Finding a landing impossible, given the presence of French troops, the flotilla moved nearer the Bay of Fundy to the village of Bobasson, on a second ridge immediately east of the Missaguash. When it was clear that Lawrence intended to land, the local priest, Abbé Jean-Louis Le Loutre, ordered the village burnt to ensure the British could not use it. The displaced Acadians took refuge with the French encampment on Bowie Sejour Ridge. In May 1750, Lawrence was ill-prepared to build a fort or to launch an attack on the French, so he retreated. He returned in September 1750 with a force of 700 men. Le Luterer and Acadian militia leader Joseph Broussard resisted the British assault. The British troops defeated them and began construction of Fort Lawrence near the site of the ruined Acadian village of Bobasson. The work on the fort proceeded rapidly and the facility was completed within weeks. Construction of Fort Bowie Sejour France responded to the construction of Fort Lawrence, Indiana, September 1750. Work on the French fortress did not begin until the following spring. But by April 1751 construction was underway under the command of Claude-Antoine de Beaumont de la Martinière. By the early summer of 1751, La Vallée reported, approximately 250 Acadians had enrolled in the local militia. Construction was slow, and the fort was incomplete when it was attacked in 1755. It was still a more substantial construction than Fort Lawrence, given its earthworks and commanding position overlooking the Cumberland Basin. In 1753, La Loutre and the Acadians began to build a cathedral just outside the fort. At about the same time, the French built two satellite forts, Fort Gaspero and Fort Menegoucha, to shore up defences of Acadia. 
for four years, until the outbreak of the French and Indian War. Garrisons at Fort Bowie Sejour and Fort Lawrence kept watch across the frontier between French and British territory on the Isthmus of Chignecto. In 1754, Louis Dupont du Chambon de Vergor became the commander of Fort Bowie Sejour. Battle of Fort Bowie Sejour on June 4, 1755 The British conquest of all of France's North American territory began when a force of British regulars and New England militia attacked Fort Bowie Sejour from Fort Lawrence under command of L.T. Carl, Robert Monckton, Le Loutre and Broussard were active in the unsuccessful defence. The British lead force took control of Fort Bowie Sejour by June 16, 1755, after which they changed its name to Fort Cumberland. Le Lauter's last act of defiance was to burn the cathedral so that it would not fall into the hands of the British. He was eventually captured and imprisoned for eight years for his role leading the resistance against the British occupation of Acadia, Fort Cumberland. French and Indian War The deportation of the Acadians in the months following the fort's capture, British forces ordered the Acadians living in the Bobassin region to sign an oath of allegiance to the British Crown. However, the Acadians refused because, fearing retaliation from both sides, they preferred to remain neutral. Although Le Loutre and Broussard escaped, some of the remaining captured Acadians reported that they had been coerced into assisting in the defence of Fort Bowie Sejour. The British used this fact against them and in August 1755, they began deporting Acadians under the orders of Charles Lawrence, now Governor of Nova Scotia. This event was the start of what would come to be known as the Great Upheaval of Acadian Society. It commenced with the Acadians in the Bobassin region. British forces burnt Acadian homes at Bobassin and the vicinity of the fort to prevent their return, as the British army had relocated to the more substantial facility at Fort Cumberland, they abandoned and burned Fort Lawrence on October 12, 1756. Fort Cumberland became one of four sites in which the British imprisoned or temporarily held Acadians during the nine years of the expulsion. Fort Frederick, St. John, New Brunswick, and Fort Charlotte, George Island, Halifax, Acadian and MIKMAQ resistance under the leadership of French officer Bachebert, Acadians and MIKMAQ fought the deportation from their homeland. In the early spring of 1756, a band of Acadian and MIKMAQ partisans ambushed a small party of New England soldiers cutting wood for Fort Cumberland killing and mutilating nine men. In April 1757, after raiding Fort Edward, a band of Acadian and MIKMAQ partisans also raided Fort Cumberland, killing and scalping two men and taking two prisoners. On July 20, 1757 MIKMAQ captured two of Gorham's rangers outside Fort Cumberland. In March 1758, 40 Acadian and MIKMAQ attacked a schooner at Fort Cumberland and killed its master and two sailors. In the winter of 1759, five British soldiers on patrol were ambushed while crossing a bridge near Fort Cumberland. They were ritually scalped and the bodies were mutilated as was common in frontier warfare. In October 1761, commander of the Fort Roderick Mackenzie of the Montgomery's Highlanders went to Bay of Chalas to remove the 787 Acadians. He captured 335. American Revolution Battle of Fort Cumberland The Bowie Sejour Ridge Fort became a strategically important British military emplacement during the American Revolutionary War as it guarded the overland route to Peninsula Nova Scotia and also the upper reaches of the Bay of Fundy. In 1776, early in American Revolutionary War, Fort Cumberland and its garrison of the Royal Fencible American Regiment repelled several rebel attacks from local guerrillas led by the American sympathizer Jonathan Eddy. This event had historical significance as the imperial loyalties of some Nova Scotian settlers were suspect, and if Fort Cumberland had fallen, Nova Scotia might have joined in the revolutionary effort. War of 1812 Fort Cumberland was abandoned in the late 1780s. 
With the British resumption of hostilities with the United States in 1812, British forces reoccupied and refurbished the fort. Although it did not see any action during this conflict, the presence of a British garrison served as a deterrent to attack. The British military in 1835 declared the fort surplus property. It was abandoned. In popular culture, the father of Canadian poetry, Charles G. D. Roberts, wrote The Raid from Beausejour, a novella about this period. It was his first published prose work. C. A. M. Edwards wrote Brooke Watson of Beausejour, a novel dealing with this period. Its lead character Brooke Watson was a man notable as the subject of the famous painting Watson and the Shark that he commissioned by John Singleton. Copley, it portrayed the event of a shark's attacking him as a youth. Thomas H. Riddle's novel His Majesty's Yankees is centered around the siege of Fort Cumberland in 1776. Legacy. In 1920, the property was declared a National Historic Site of Canada. A museum has been built there and portions of the fort restored. Its major earthworks command a view of Shinyekto Bay. On 28 June 1985 Canada Post issued Fort Bowie Sejour, one of the 20 stamps in their Forts Across Canada series. The stamps are perforated 12 a one half x 13 and were printed by Ashton Potter Limited based on the designs by Rolf P. Harder. Affiliations the museum is affiliated with CMA, CHIN, and Virtual Museum of Canada.